Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the RSSI capability of the Tyrannus in the X8R receiver. Before I do that though, I'm going to talk a little bit about what RSSI is. It stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator and it's something used mainly for wireless networking. We can use it in the RC hobby as well. You can use it as an indicator on how much range you have on your transmitter. It's not as simple as that though, the RSSI measurement is not linear. For example, it's the same as measuring sound in decibels. Any increase or decrease in 6 decibels means that the signal has doubled or halved in strength. Essentially what we are doing is viewing the strength of the signal received by the aircraft and sending it back to us. A spectrum analyzer shows what a radio signal looks like on the band it is transmitting. With our frequency hopping transmitters, visually they appear as spikes along the band. The stronger the signal, the bigger the spike. As the aircraft gets further away from us, the size of the spike will reduce. If our aircraft can somehow monitor the strength of those spikes and send it back to us, then we can get a rough idea of our range. To get the RSSI information, we need some kind of two-way telemetry. The receiver on the aircraft, in this case the X8R, either needs to output its signal back to our transmitter, such as the Tyrannus, or it is to output its signal to an on-screen display, such as the Minim OSD, and then transmit it back to us through our FPV gear. RSSI usually comes in two flavors, known as PWM or Analog RSSI. The difference between the two is fairly simple. On an oscilloscope, the PWM RSSI looks like blocks with peaks and troughs. Analog RSSI is just a voltage range, usually between 0 and 3.3 volts, or 0 and 5 volts, depending on the receiver type. Our Minim OSD only accepts analog RSSI signals. That's okay though, because PWM RSSI can be converted to analog RSSI. The X8R does send its RSSI info direct to the Tyrannus, and we will get into that later. The problem is with its supposed RSSI output. The manual states that the RSSI output on the X8R is PWM. However, this seems to be false. Looking at all the forums, there isn't anyone who has managed to get a correct RSSI reading from the X8R to an OSD. I mentioned this in the Minim OSD video and it's pretty disappointing. In fact, it seems to be the case with all the X series receivers. Usually, to convert a PWM RSSI signal into an analog voltage, you would need to make up a low pass filter, also known as an RC filter or a DAC, which stands for Digital to Analog Converter. All it does is take those peaks and troughs of the PWM RSSI signal and smooths them out. The same as an equalizer on your stereo can eliminate high, mid or low frequencies to adjust the bass and treble. The reason we need to smooth those peaks and troughs out is because if we don't, then our RSSI signal won't be smooth and it will fluctuate up and down and not be accurate. I was going to do a tutorial on how to make one of these leads, but it's pretty useless in conjunction with the X8R as it doesn't work. Put simply, it's a servo lead with a resistor and a capacitor soldered together. If you would like a tutorial on how to make one of these, let me know, as it will work with most other receivers. Usually, you will plug the lead into the RSSI output of your receiver, and then into the SBUS slot on the Pixhawk. You need to change the settings in Mission Planner to read port 103, which is specific to the Pixhawk, and then the voltage range to 3.3 volts, which is the supposed range for the X8R. You will then turn on RSSI in the Minim OSD software by enabling it in one of the panels, and then you need to check raw data. This is because usually we would check the raw RSSI value on the OSD when the transmitter is switched on, and then the value when the transmitter is switched off and input those figures into the Minim OSD software. When the raw value is unchecked, the OSD will work out the range percentage as a value out of 100. You can see that we are getting an erratic reading. We are getting up and down pulses. Interestingly, the reading doesn't change when you move away from the aircraft, which it should do if receiving a genuine RSSI figure. It is perhaps sending a digital signal, or a signal that is specific to FR Sky hardware that I don't have. 
I believe the non-X series receivers have a normal RSSI output, which is annoying, especially as the XATAR is meant to be a premium receiver. There is something we can do, as mentioned before, the XATAR sends its RSSI value direct to the Tyrannus. You can view this figure by long pressing the page button, which takes us to the telemetry screen. Its range goes from 0 to 100, with 100 being full range. The TX will give us an RSSI warning at 35 decibels, which is the figure that FR Sky deems to be its limit. RSSI low. RSSI critical. We don't really want to be messing with screens while flying though, so what we can do is set up a switch to tell us the RSSI using the sound banks of the Tyrannus. Go into the special function screen and create a new entry. Select a spare switch and then set the option to play value and then select RSSI. Now when we press the switch it will tell us the RSSI strength in decibels. 80 dB 79 dB 80 dB 80 dB the reason I have set this up to a switch is mainly for testing purpose, however it's quite handy to have in general. If we are to get an RSSI reading output to our OSD, then we want to make sure that it is accurate. This switch will allow us to compare the Tyrannus' RSSI reading against what we expect to see on our OSD. You can pretty much do anything with the Tyrannus, and this is a prime example of it. We can take the RSSI value being read by the Tyrannus and convert it into a signal, which we can then send back to the receiver via a spare channel. Even better, as our receiver is using an SBUS cable to send all of its channels to the Pixhawk, we don't even need to add an extra cable. We do lose a channel on our radio for this feature, however, as we have 16 channels in total, it's not a huge loss. Before we get into rejigging the channels, I must state that this is only going to work through channel 8. This is the way the Minim OSD is set to work. So with that in mind, if we check out the input screen on my Tyrannus, you can see that I have moved my OSD toggle to channel 6 to free up channel 8 for the RSSI entry. If we go into channel 8, you can see I have changed the input name to RSSI, but also if you check out the source, you can actually set the source to the telemetry of the RSSI. How clever is that? We need to change the weight and scale to 100, so we have the full range of the telemetry. Then if we exit out of there and page over to our mixer screen, I have also rejigged channel 6 to my OSD toggle switch. And channel 8, we have the RSSI mixer. If we go into that screen, you can see I have called the mix RSSI and also the source is RSSI. You need to change the weight to 195 and the offset to minus 100. This is because normally a channel starts at the halfway point, so our RSSI value at naught would start at the wrong place. So we need a starting position at minus 100 and the weight I'm setting at 195. The reason I set it to 195 is 200 for the X8R is slightly out of the Minim OSD's PWM range. You will see that later. Before we do anything else, we can check that our RSSI value is being relayed as an output on channel 8 to our receiver. If we turn on the Tyrannus and then the quadcopter, we can then press the page button and that will take us to the channel monitor. If we check out channel 8, we should see the RSSI value converted as a PWM signal sent out to the receiver. If we unplug the quadcopter, then that value should drop to the opposite side and read 0. This is why we had to create an offset, otherwise 0 would be at the halfway point. Now that we have that working, we need to configure the Minim OSD to interpret those values. Plug the Minim OSD into the computer using the FTDI adapter, then select your correct COM port and press read. This allows us to return the values from the previous episode where I set up the Minim OSD. If you didn't see that video, it's the tutorial before this video in the high-end 450 size quadcopter playlist. Once the data has been read, we need to change the RSSI channel to channel 8. We also need to enable the raw SSI checkbox option. We need to change the OSD toggle switch to channel 6. This was channel 8 previously, but I have had to switch it around so that the RSSI value comes through channel 8. Also make sure that you have RSSI selected on one of your panels, of course. Press save to current tab and then reconnect the minimum OSD to the quadcopter and turn everything on. Through my FPV DVR, you can see that we have quite a large figure showing for RSSI. 
Ignore the percentage character, it is a bug. What we are looking at here is the RSSI output as a PWM value as I move the transmitter away from the quadcopter the value reduces. What we need to do is move the transmitter as close to the quadcopter as we can and also navigate to the RSSI telemetry screen on the Tyrannus. We want the screen to read 100 and then mark down the PWM value on the OSD. You can see here that it's 1980. Now we need to turn off the transmitter and see what it reads. We have a value of 874. Now that we have those figures, we need to unplug the Minim OSD from the quadcopter and reconnect it back to the computer. Connect to the Minim OSD extra software again, and this time we're going to put our biggest figure in the max box and our lowest figure in the min box. Now this is why I set the weight in the mixer at 195 in the Tyrannus. You can see that the max figure only allows us to go up to 2000. In the software, a weight of 200 gives a PWM figure of over 2000, which the software will not allow us to input and we won't get our max reading. In the previous Tyrannus episode, we set the failsafe to no pulses, which brings our PWM figure down really low. In fact, the lowest number we can input here on the minimum OSD is 900. Our figure was 874, which doesn't really matter so much. We will leave it at 900. It is still going to calculate it really accurately, fingers crossed. Once we have done that, we can now click RSSI Enable Raw. This is going to take our PWM values and convert them down to a percentage that should hopefully match what we have on our Tyrannus' telemetry screen. We need to save the current tab and it's not going to harm saving our settings to a new file either. Now we disconnect the Minim OSD from the PC and connect it back up to the quadcopter. There is a lot of back and forth, I know, but trust me, it is worth it. Turn everything back on and you will notice when it first powers up we have a really long figure in the RSSI value. Once the radio boots up, it then changes to our RSSI percentage. You can see though that we have a couple of extra invalid characters on the screen. This is a bug with the system that is well known and has not been fixed as of yet. You can easily get rid of those characters by cycling through the other screens and it wipes the invalid characters away. It's annoying but I can live with it. Now we can compare the RSSI reading on the OSD and flip to our RSSI DB switch on the Tyrannus and hopefully they will match up. 88db, 91db, 92db, 93db. Perfect. Let's go for a walk and see if they still match up. 67db, 66db, 65db, 66db, 64db, 66db, 66db. This is a fantastic result. Quite the workaround, but very rewarding, I think you will agree. So there you go, that is my RSSI explanation, and also how to get the most out of it with the XATAR receiver and the Tyrannus. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.